Hello IED, this is going to be project 1.3.7, design a protective case. And boy, is there a lot of stuff to go through in this. Uh, whenever you first look at the entire assignment, there's a ton of reading material. There's a ton of things that they are going to be expecting us to do. So I think the best thing to do is to just kind of break this apart into chunks. I kind of do that all the time anyway with most of the stuff that we do. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna focus specifically at the very beginning on the design brief because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be designing a protective case and there's a whole bunch of resources here on the first part of the uh, project lead the way assignment so i'm going to click on this uh, design a protective case design brief and we're going to look through this carefully because this is going to be one of the most important documents that we have to deal with um, it this basically helps us to define the problem and let us know what exactly is going on with said problem and let my potato computer try to get everything loaded up and it should be able to go eventually there we go looks like we got it going now all right so uh, looks like we have the client being an earbud manufacturer and the target consumer is going to be an earbud customer now I think that in the case of my class, I'm going to let you guys design any kind of small consumer product that you want to put a case around, because if there's something that you really wanted to uh, protect, or if you have something that you think would be like a really good idea to have a container, I'm going to let you guys do that. So it's going to be very similar to what we're doing now. It shouldn't be too terribly different. So what is the problem? The problem says a manufacturer of high-end earbuds or any other small consumer product has received complaints from customers that the wiring for model E123 is susceptible to pulling free from each earpiece when carried in pockets and bags. In addition to strengthening the wire connections, the manufacturer would like to supply a protective case for the earbuds that will further protect the device from damage. So who has the problem? It's the people who actually own the earbuds. They're buying the stuff and then the wires are pulling out and then they don't work anymore. If this continues, you know, people aren't gonna, they'll leave bad reviews. People aren't going to buy the product anymore. Uh, they would much rather pick something that would last much, much longer. Um, where is the problem happening? All markets across the world report similar issues. I mean, that makes sense. That's a really common problem. That's one of the reasons Apple went completely wireless on that one was because they were just eliminating the problem of the cord altogether. There were consequences that came from that, but that's another story. Uh, why is the problem important? The company has experienced significant loss in earbud market share corresponding to the increase in earbud complaints. So the more these are breaking, the more people aren't buying their stuff. That actually makes a lot of sense to me. So the design statement we're going to fill in here in just a little bit, we're going to be designing a uh, case for these earbuds. So we're going to, the design statement is basically what are you going to do? But let's go ahead and look down here. The criteria. Uh, the case must be composed of two components connected by a hinge mechanism. The design must allow easy insertion of the earbuds into the case such that it requires an average user seven seconds or less to secure the earbuds in the case. So we're going to have to do some testing here. We're going to have to test with timers once we get the product built on whether or not it would take seven seconds to be able to put them in there or not. And this is a decent constraint because, I mean, think about it. If you have a case and it takes you like five minutes to get in there, then you're not going to use that case because you don't really want to get your earbuds out if it's going to take you five minutes to do so. You're going to really want to have to get those earbuds at that moment. You'd be like, give me give me a second. I got to get my earbuds out. Let me show you this fantastic song, but I'm going to show this this fantastic song to you in five minutes you know it, nobody's gonna wait on you for that so you know people aren't gonna use that case if it takes way too long number three the case must be securely stored and protect the uh, must securely store and protect the earbuds from damage and not break or open when carried in pants or pockets or loosely in a purse or bag so it shouldn't just randomly fall apart and that makes a lot of sense uh, the design will con include vent holes to allow air circulation into the case but not allow any parts to protrude from the holes so you don't want the things accidentally escaping but apparently they were going to allow some air circulation in there uh, I guess in case you want to put a gerbil in there. Uh, and then we're going to add some measurable criteria to more effectively specify a successful solution. So we'll talk about more about those additional criteria in class whenever we get to this project. Um, and as we've you know, figured out in more detail. 
Uh, and then let's see, we're going to have some time constraints. Uh, design constraint must be submitted for critical review by a certain date. Uh, whenever you guys get to that in your particular class, you're going to write in that time. Uh, if your instructor requires a prototype, a 3D printed prototype must be submitted by, and you're going to write that date down. Uh, due to limitations in production, the maximum volume of the material is this, and the maximum print time is this. Uh, we're going to talk about that in class as well, too. These are constraints that come during production time because you only have so much time to be able to make stuff. And 3D printers, if you haven't noticed yet in this class, go really slow. All right, so what are we going to need? Uh, looks like we've got, we're doing a proof of concept only, so we're not going through all the entire stages. Um, looks like we need some initial concept sketches, uh, a multi-view drawing detailing each component of the preliminary design. Uh, we're going to need optionally a 3D printed prototype. My class will be doing the 3D printed prototype. Uh, documentation of total material volume and print time of the prototype. That's fair because I need to know how long it takes. Uh, a proof of concept statement and a project reflection. And we will go through those as we get to them. But mainly what we were focusing on this time is the just the design brief itself. So let's go back and focus on the design statement. Uh, the design statement is what you are actually intending to do. Like what you're doing in the design statement is you're focusing in on what your what problem you're trying to solve and how you're actually going to solve it. So it looks like we're using the 3D printer again. So we're going to be designing an earbud case and that earbud case is going to be created using 3D printing technology and it's going to be able to hold uh, the model E123 of the earbuds or whatever small consumer device or product that you're using. So obviously if you're deciding to be like, no, I don't want to make earbuds. I don't, I want to make a case for like my pencils or something. Uh, it needs to be a, uh, well, it says small consumer product. It doesn't have to be electronic. So if you're like, I'm really holding my pencils or erasers or something like that, and you want a place to secure them, obviously you're not going to pick uh, earbuds instead. Okay, so make sure that the design statement actually includes what you're actually wanting to do. I can't tell you how many times I look at somebody's design statement and they just copied it straight over from the problem. If you want to make something else, make something else, but make sure that your design statement actually runs through uh, what you said that it was going to do. It, and it's just a couple of sentences. You don't. It's a design statement, not a design paragraph. You don't have to go crazy on it. It's just like, what are you doing? What are you doing for the company? What are you doing for your client? Okay. Um, I think that pretty much does it for the uh, design. I'm going to break this up into small sections. So uh, in the next video, I will talk about uh, what we're going to do with the uh, design process and talk a little bit about the uh, container itself that got shown to us in the multi-view drawings. Uh, have fun and I'll talk to you guys later.